remember the time when you were gone from Hey, you're watching T.C. McCarthy, the most handsome and entertaining science fiction author on video. And today we're going to be talking about a planet, or not a planet, a moon that's one of my favorites. It's one that orbits Jupiter, and it's one that takes place, or it's one that makes an appearance in my upcoming science fiction book, Tiger Burning, available in July 2019 from Bain Books. Now, in my last episode, pew, uh, I, I did a video on why I like to plug my book, even though it's not available to buy yet. You can pre-order. Go ahead and take a look at that video and explain everything in terms of why I'm doing that. It would help me a lot, so please just think about it. Anyway, in that book, uh, the characters find their way to Ganymede. I'm not going to give you the, the details. I don't want to ruin the plot. But they find their way to Ganymede because they need water for their spacecraft. And I would love to see this in a movie because it, I would imagine it's breathtaking to be on the surface of Ganymede looking up and seeing Jupiter fill so much of the sky. So what I want to do is just call out some interesting facts about Ganymede as one of the planets that could contain life in our solar system. Tiger burning is about the about invasion of an alien race, uh, but the fact of the matter is we may have aliens on planets very, very, very close to us, not to mention moons like Ganymede. So Ganymede was first discovered way back in 1610 by Galileo, and it's named for a mythical Greek character. Ganymede is also the largest moon in our solar system, and I don't think many people realize that. It's, it's pretty big. The other interesting thing, well, there are many interesting things about Ganymede, but one of the other interesting things is that it has a magnetosphere. It's the only moon that I know of in our solar system to have one. And along those lines, it's thought that Ganymede consists of either a layer of ice followed by liquid water, followed by some rock, and then a, a, a liquid iron core, or at least partially liquid iron core. But there are many different theories in terms of the structure of Ganymede, and I'll go through that in a second, but it's pretty neat. Now, when you look at pictures of Ganymede, you're going to see light areas and dark areas. Light areas are probably ice and uh, water crystals. The dark areas, they think, scientists think, could be ice that contains some sort of organic material or rock or clay or something like that. Ganymede actually has a thin atmosphere that contains oxygen, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the Hubble telescope confirmed this. Now, we've sent probes pretty close to Ganymede. I believe the first one was Pioneer 10, but then Voyager went by Ganymede and a couple of others, too. Now, the European Space Agency, which has done some pretty cool miss missions recently, is sending a new one called JUICE. And I can't remember what that stands for. You can Google it. But basically, JUICE is going to take a very close-up look at Ganymede because it's thought that Ganymede contains more liquid water than even its cousin, Europa, another moon of Jupiter. And one of the other cool features of Ganymede is that it's kind of tectonically active. If you look at the surface, you'll see what look like uh, cracks in the, in the surface, and those are basically slip faults or strike slip faults as a result of, um, of movement of, the, of Ganymede's crust, which in, in large part, again, is ice. So getting back to the question, could Ganymede host alien life? And some people think the answer is yes. Now, one of the things that scientists... Um, one of the assumptions that planetary scientists look at is that you need, in a case like Ganymede, uh, where you've got basically the surface is almost entirely water, um, you would need liquid water to come in contact with a volcanically active rock surface somewhere below. Because when you look at the Earth, at deep, at, um, you know, deep water expo exploration of Earth volcanic activity, you get these things that are called smokers, which are vents on the ocean floor, and they teem with life. They teem with life, and then when you get far away from them, kind of life dies off. So scientists think that you need that volcanic activity to provide heat, nutrients, and other things to have things like bacteria and other organisms grow. And the argument has long been that it's not liquid water that's in contact with the rock surface in Ganymede, but solid ice, and that the water layer is somewhere in between. But some scientists have put together a model that suggests that Ganymede is more complex than that, that it's not just ice, water, ice, rock, that it's basically layers, uh, almost like a wedding cake or a layer cake kind of thing, that concludes with water in contact with the rock surface, which is great. Now we're talking about, yes, there could be life way far down below there. There is one problem, however, with that model, and pressures are pretty darn great when you get to that surface that would be in contact with the rock. Why does that matter? Well, when you're talking about these kinds of pressures, basically proteins are going to have a hard time folding or unfolding in the, in the formations they need to, to form, and you're going to have problems with creating complex life. Still, these missions that are going to these moons, the JUICE one, and I think NASA put one on hold and uh, may resurrect it at some point, these missions are very important. They're going to look, they're going to study it with radar, they're going to do complex maps, etc. And they're going to look at subsurface uh, indications of rock and try and map what's below the ice. 
Uh, those are very important, but what I want to see is a mission that basically drills through and gets to the liquid water and sends a probe down with video. You know, that's what I want to see. If there's life on these things, like if you look at 2010, where I think the Chinese lander lands on a moon, I don't know if it's Titan or Europa or someplace, and this big kind of thing comes out through a crack in the ice and basically scoops up the whole Chinese crew. I, I, you know, I'm a science fiction author. That kind of stuff gets me going. Love it. So, unfortunately, none of these probes are going to do anything like that, but I hope sometime in the future they do. In the meantime, I just wanted to explain why Ganymede plays a role. It's water. Water is going to be important for, for uh, space travel in the future, whether it's for coolant of uh, fusion reactors. You know, it depends on the engine of whatever spacecraft you're flying, but you're going to need to drink water, of course, if you're human beings and you're in one of these craft. That's it for this episode. Thanks again for watching. Buy my books and transmission. Hey, T.C. McCarthy here, the most eclectic and entertained science fiction author on YouTube, maybe even the internet. Thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. As usual, buy my books. I've got a new one coming out in July, and uh, I'll have a giveaway coming up soon, so stay tuned for that. Appreciate you subscribing to my channel, and please, 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 please don't forget to click that little bell icon so that whenever I upload new content, you get notified. Thanks again. See you soon.